What's going on beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video, welcome to the channel. If this is your first video that you're watching, you have picked a great one, because today I got a new bike. I'm not going to drag this out any longer than it needs to be. You guys saw the title, you guys saw the thumbnail, so I'm going to go ahead and turn around and show you. Oh my goodness, it's a little windy so let me close my visor. Take a look at this beauty. This girl right here is a 2006 Honda CBR 600RR. Man, that's a good looking bike. Go ahead and get a sound bite for you. It does have a Scorpion Titanium. I believe it's just a slip-on. We got 24,445 miles on it. it. Did have about 24,350 whenever I got it. I put about 100 on. Anyway, this isn't a cold start. It's a... Uh, you can see it's at 161 degrees, but let's go ahead and start it. Man, I think it sounds mean. Give it some baby revs. Ooh, that wasn't anything. Let's go ahead and go for a ride. Go ahead and go visor down as much as we can. Won't close all the way because of my GoPro mount. Uh, I am rocking a new helmet. So hopefully the wind noise isn't quite as bad as my previous videos. Oh, she sounds nasty. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this bike. So like I said, this is a 2006 um, Honda CBR 600RR. This one does have the Repsol fairings on. However, I do believe these are aftermarket fairings. This was not the uh, original fairing kit that it came with. I don't think they offered a Repsol 600 back in the day. Now they do, um, but back then they, it was only a 1000 thing. So these are aftermarket fairings. It has been down a couple times. I'll go ahead and get to another spot and show you guys uh, pretty much everything that was wrong with it. And there's also a couple things that I can discuss about what I had to change. Yeah, so this bike didn't come with any mirrors whenever I got it. Uh, the person, the previous owner, just didn't have them on, so it is what it is. But parts for this bike are actually really cheap. I'm kind of learning that as I'm going along with it, because uh, it needed a couple things, and they all have been pretty inexpensive. So I got the new mirrors on. I got a new integrated tail light that has the turn signals built into it. Now, the one that was on it was supposedly an integrated one. However, the wiring was all a mess. In fact, the uh, front turn signals, it has those kind of closer to flush mount turn signals on it. And they weren't even wired at all. The loose wires were just kind of hanging out. So I had to tear into the bike, take all the fairings off, check all the wiring. I re-spliced, or not re-spliced, I just spliced the front turn signals into the OEM uh, wires for them. And then on the rear for the integrated tail light, I took the one out that was there because it looked like I couldn't find any uh, turn signal wires on it. Even though it was supposedly in integrated, I couldn't find the wiring for it, so I just ordered a new one. It was only about $25, and I got that one all wired up. Did not have a license plate mount, so I got one of those ordered and mounted. And then, obviously, like I said, the mirrors. I also put LED lights in it. It had the halogens from, you know, from the time period that this bike is from. But I ended up getting LED lights for it, so it's a lot brighter. And I do have new bar ends coming in as well. But this bike runs, runs like a dream. You know, 24,000 miles on a super sport. A lot of people are going to tell you that that's kind of higher mileage. But honestly, when it comes down to it, if you take care of these bikes and you take care of, uh, yeah, watch it, Prius. Whenever you actually get down to it, as long as you do the oil changes, you do your um, coolant flushes and everything that you got to do, you check the valves, and you get everything in spec, these bikes will last you well over 100,000 miles. I just love the way this thing sounds. This thing is just, oh, my goodness. We got this guy over here cutting it up a little bit. That is a Jixxer squid if I've ever seen one. Shorts and a tank top. And he was on a Jixxer. You guys read the title correctly. This is honestly one of my dream bikes. Just in early to mid 2000s uh super sports have just always been some of my favorite bikes i think they look just as good as the new ones that are coming out uh, back then they didn't have all the rider aids or anything so this bike doesn't have abs doesn't have traction control doesn't have power modes doesn't have wheelie control 
you just need to know how to ride this thing. And uh, if you don't, it is not going to be qu quite as forgiving. Why is this person so damn close to me? Yeah, so honestly, this is one of my dream bikes. Um, I've always loved this body style of CBR. They ran this body style for the 2005 and 2006. And I believe it kind of looked like this on the 0304s, but there were some changes made in 05. Um, I just think it's a very aggressive looking bike. It's a timeless looking bike. And same with the Jixxers of the era. The uh, GSXR from 2006 is also up there as one of my favorites. Just something about those K6 Jixxers. Uh, and that's actually a bike I was looking for. But knowing the bike market right now, uh, everyone's just kind of out of their mind when it comes to what they want for a bike. So Jixxers were running, man, an 06 or an 07 Jixxer was running uh, about $7,000, six to $7,000 for one that had about 20,000 miles on it. And I just can't justify that. As much as I love those bikes, I had to let those ones pass. Um, I couldn't find one for a good price, tried to negotiate with a couple people. But um, eventually I was able to find this bike and I was actually able to find a couple other CBRs because in 2007, they changed the body style on the CBR again, made a couple changes that I do like, like the uh, turn signals built into the mirrors. It had the big old uh, Ram Air mount, or the Ram Air intake in between the headlights that ran through the frame and to the engine. And this one has some pretty good intakes as well. So I was looking at a couple of the 2007s and 2008s, um, and they were gonna cost me a fair amount more than this bike was. So honestly, I got a really good price on this bike and I am I have been extremely happy with it so far. And one of the funny things about Honda uh, and the CBR 600RR is the fact that these older ones make more power than the newer ones. But these 2006 and, and 2005 was the exact same. They didn't make any changes. So the 2005 and 2006 CBR 600 rs made um, they made a uh, 120 horsepower and about 50 pound feet of torque. So they are no slouch of a bike. The newer CBR 600 rr the 2013 Plus, because they haven't changed it since 2013 makes 113 horsepower and mind you these are both numbers to the crank so this isn't going to be what it's pulling to the wheel i think these bikes tested at the wheel made about 105 so still plenty fast enough for a bike that only weighs 440 pounds i believe is the wet weight but like i said this bike is not perfect it's far from uh the engine itself is really really good i will say here and you know ooh, that was a a rough rev match here in a couple thousand miles, I will have to uh, get the valves checked, I'm sure, in about four or 5,000 miles. Pretty much once I get to 30 to 35K, that's when you really got to start worrying about um, doing valves on a Super Sport. But like I said earlier, if you do stay on top of all that, uh, these bikes will last you forever. I'm trying to find a spot where I can get on it a little bit for you guys. I think I might know a road up here. If it's not shut down, looks like it might be. No, it looks like we're clear. Something about these, you know, early model super sports, the 600s, it just can't be replicated. You know, now, like I was saying, you got all these different rider aids and you got all these different controls that are helping out. And it just tames the bike for you. You know, you don't really get that, that sense of achievement that you do on hopping on an older super sport. You're like, where you have to do the work to really keep this bike under control. So far in the, I think it's only been three or four days that I've owned this bike, it has been an absolute blast. I've loved every moment of it. Love the way this thing sounds, love the way it feels when I ride it. It is lowered, it was a girl's bike, so I do need to raise it back up. I just need to find a kickstand for it um, before I do that. We got a fellow rider coming on. Jicks or 1K. Ooh, we're getting pretty hot. Hopefully the light changes for us here soon. And I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm used to riding the Mini for so long. I've been without a big bike for quite a while and I've just been riding my pit bike and my Z125. But this bike just feels ridiculously fast. I mean, you look at that, I got a 15,000 RPM red line. 
and this bike screams once you get to about eight to nine k starts making peak power i think it makes peak at 13 but you know it, it gets in that power band at about the eight to nine k mark and this bike just wants to go i'm gonna go ahead and get on it here for you guys a little bit as long as i got enough room to all right let's go ahead and see what the cbr is made of shall we you guys are gonna start making fun of me you're gonna be like oh that's not fast it's just a 600 600s are plenty fast enough you got pretty much more power than you're ever gonna use on the street um, yes 1000s are just a completely different breed and it, that's where it starts getting really insane but a 600 is plenty fast enough I mean this bike right here could walk 90% of the cars that are on the road. So yeah, 600 is pretty fast and it's pretty insane. I will say I'm experiencing quite a bit of wind. I am using the, uh, you might be able to see it, this kind of crappy strap um, helmet mount. And that's the helmet mount that I've been using on every single one of my helmets since I started my YouTube channel. And it's just not a very good mount, I know that. Uh, I am going to be ordering one specific for this helmet. And that should give me a far 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 better mount it'll be a lot more stable for you guys and it should just make it better but all that being said i'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here thank you guys so much for watching uh this is gonna be a great new addition to the channel i'm gonna be able to start doing moto vlogs again and actually going out and exploring more because on the z125 i'm a little bit confined to my local areas because that bike just doesn't have enough power and enough speed to really get me out where I need to go. Don't worry, I'm keeping the Z. I'm going to keep on doing my wheelies on it. This bike's not going to get stunted. Um, I don't plan on ever stunning this bike. This is just going to be kind of like my commuter and my my baby, per se. But I do still have the Z125. Not going to sell it. That bike is too much fun, and Sheriff Bo still is planning on getting one for a Grom. So once he, gets, once he gets one of those, uh, you guys will be seeing a lot more just adventure videos on the Z's and on the Groms. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you guys for 3,000 subscribers too, by the way. I know I haven't brought that up this video, but I just did pass 3,000. I'm trying to make 2023 a good year for me. Uh, so if you guys do like the video and you aren't subscribed, Please consider subscribing, share this video with your friends. I'm really trying to grow and make the best videos possible for you guys. But that's enough talking. I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Thank you guys again, and I will see you guys in the next video.